there's a quantum there's a quantum cup product defined that this way. Well, roughly speaking, it counts. I mean, it counts a, a number of uh, genus zero stable maps to GMOP passing through uh, the two inputs and then the point cloud of outputs. And uh, you can run quantum super calculus studies this quantum product in terms of Schubert basis. And today we are going to discuss this core module ring, I mean quantum core module ring. And um, we will focus on our three results, um, including quantum equals RFI, Peterson variety presentation, and D module mirror conjecture. Um, so Arfan Grassmannian, uh, which is defined like this here, K is the formal loop, ring of formal, I mean, ring of, what is that? The ring of uh, low on series, and O is the formal power series ring. And um, there's something similar um, to, the uh, GMOP, like we have alpha and super basis, which is defined to be the, uh, I mean, the fundamental class of the orbit closure, Bora orbit closure. But here, the B is the alpha analog of a Bora, the Ivahoric. And T here is uh, it is a torx fixed point. Of the Arvan Grassmannian. In general, it is indexed by the covert letters. I mean, if G is simply connected, uh, which, which we will assume in, in our talk. And uh, But there's uh, another set indexing this, uh, the, 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 the set of torus fixed one, namely the, the set of uh, minimum length. Who's that representative in the Alpha group mod W? It is more convenient for us to if we want to discuss the following result. And uh, we have a fungiant product on this uh, homo equivalent homology ring uh, given by this uh, very simple formula. Well, it is simple with respect to this space at the, the fixed point. I mean, well, uh, uh, this set also form a basis of the homology, but both, uh, after localized uh, the equivalent parameters, but it is simple with respect to this basis, but it's not with respect to the affine Schubert basis. So equivalent affine Schubert character studies for the onion product uh, in, ter in terms of the affine Schubert basis. So here's the first result uh, discovered by Peterson and proved by Lem and Shimon Zoro. Um, namely, the R5. So we have quantum equals R5, but that's of all the case when P equals the Borel. In general, uh, the R5 super calculus determines the quantum in the following way. Uh, namely, we have an uh, explicit Ring map from the alpha, uh, the homology of alpha Grassmannian to the quantum cohomology, uh, explicitly because it sends a basis element of a super basis to the to another basis element of the quantum super basis, and for P is also explicit, uh, but uh, because it's a bit complicated. So, uh, roughly speaking, just send a basis element to another basis element or zero. So it we may go to zero. But what I mean by equals and determinants um, means that um, in general, this assignment of the basis elements are not bijective, even for p equals b. But it's not so. Uh, if we, in the following sense, uh, both 
but this is injective and it is subjective if we multiply by suitable quantum parameters. And here uh, for general P is, is also the same. If we take away all the basis elements going to zero, then uh, the assignment will be injective as well and subjective in, in the same sense. Okay. And um, the published proof by Lam and Shimoso relies on some algebraic and combinatorial identities. But I can, um, but for example, but uh, quantum Schiaffernet uh, formula and Peterson Woolworth's comparison formula. These are formulas for the quantum cohomology. And there are some for the cohomology of alpha Gaussian, but I'm not knowledgeable enough to tell you more here. So the question is, can we prove the result um, and more geometrically? But it is already, I mean, their proof is geometric because it depends on this formula, which is geometric, which are geometric. So let's look at something from synthetic geometry. We can define a map and appear another map uh, with the same source and target in the following way. First, um, let me introduce um, a more a practical definition of like alpha Grassmannian. Namely, the alpha alpha Grassmannian represents the functor sending each scheme to the set of isomorphism classes of principal G bundles over P1 cross times gamma with trivializations over, I mean, away from the zero. And this result is proved by Beauville and Laszlo uh, algebraically and by Plessy Siegel analytically. So um, uh, this map uh, calls a uh, Safrif Seidel map uh, is defined in this way. So um, to record the domain is the the homology. So it's represented by a cycle going to alpha Grassmannian. So by the above result, it is represented by principal G bundle uh, but, uh, over P1 times gamma with some trivialization. So we can use this space to, to define comorbidum theory. Yes, uh, yeah, so this is the space. So we have a principal G bundle and we can form the isolated fiber bundle. So it's now a G mod P vibration over P1 times gamma. And we can consider the moduli space of stable map going to this space uh, with certain degree. Um, Degree is not arbitrary, but uh, the stable mass is required to uh, contain a component which projects isomorphically down there. So it is section. But since we are we are going to compatify, so we are allowed to uh, some bubbles. But the bubbles um, will be projected to uh, point down there, so they are vertical, vertically lying in. So some fibers which are G mod P. So these are the so these are the requirement on the degree. So after and uh, also we uh, sorry one mark point. There's a one mark point and is required to heat the cycle over infinity. And because we have a trivialization, we can spread it like this tri trivially using this trivialization. And this is the output. So the the one we mean, what we really mean can't uh, is that uh, the map is defined to be like this. Something like this. In the standard way, how we, for example, that's, a, that's the way how we define, for example, the quantum cup product. And uh, there's some issue about how to record the degree. 
using some live bundle, but I'm going to omit it. So we can define such a map. Uh, actually, it's not just for G more people, any but for any G variety. And there's a here's the history. So Sido first defined a map uh, where the input consists of zero dimensional cycles in a larger group, namely the base loop group of the Hamiltonian group for any symplectic manifold. And Safrev extended it to the to include arbit, uh, cycles of arbitrary dimension. So here's a lemma. We, we, a priori, we don't know how to compute it, but we know it is a ring map and it's proved by Safrev, which extend, extending Seidel's argument for the non equivalent case. So it originally they, they prove it non equivalently. And equivalently, we can use localization to reduce to the situation where the inputs are consist of point, torus fixed point. But this equation is proved by Ilitani. And uh, it turns out that uh, the map I've just defined is equal to uh, PRS, Peterson Lamb Schumann Solo map. So this proof gives an alternative proof of the result because uh, we can prove by theory, a general theory, that uh, it is a ring map. The right hand side is a ring map. And now we, I, we are able to compute this map. It turns out to be equal to PRS map. The ideal proof is that um, the more we can show that the more dry stacks are smooth and unexpected dimension, if the input cycles are both Samuelson resolutions of the Arvai Schubert varieties. So after doing that, we can compute like how Fulton Woodward compute all two pointer Gomorrhidon invariants. Uh, here they used the fact that uh, all the B orbits and B minus orbits intersect transversely. So the final stack um, uh, meanings do we have uh, N for some for their cases, something like this. The final stack here means we take a fiber product, EV1, EV2, with uh, some cycle representing represent, represent, representing the the insertions. So this is the final stack. And because of the transversality, we, it turns out that the final stacks are smooth at an expected dimension, which is zero. So the invariant will be, will be computed by counting the number of elements in this stack. But since the intersection of the Borel and the opposite is still a continuous group, the stack will consist of T invariant curves so that we can determine the stack combinatorially. And this is the same way uh, how we compute a uh, Safia Seidel's map. And this approach can take us further because we can consider inputs different from the alpha and Schubert classes. And it turns out we can prove the Peterson variety presentation. And um, also, we can consider an extra action on the alpha Grassmannian, which is a loop ro rotation. And we can put it in the definition of southwest side of this map. And it turns out we can obtain a deep module mirror conjecture. So Peterson variety presentation, I think it's also announced by Peterson in the MIT lectures. So roughly speaking, it's that we have a presentation of the quantum core module ring, uh, which where yp is a scheme, and moreover, we know uh, we can find expressive functions on this scheme which go to the quantum parameter under this isomorphism. So here's a definition of yp, the Peterson variety. So first, we start with um, the land and deals group of G. And later I will, I will recall a practical definition of the land and deal group. And then we have a principal Leopoldian E and um, isomorphism between the, 
the Katan and the Dual Katan. Then we can define the compatify. But I mean, I mean, I think this is what we call Peterson variety, so which is a projective variety defined this way. And uh, our YP will be the stratum of the Peterson variety. That means Y cutting with uh, some Bruja cell. And uh, this result is proved for the following cases, including all GMOP B, that is complete flat varieties, and all flat varieties of type A, and some and projects, BCD, Grassmannia, and, and all minuscule varieties. So here's a, a practical definition of the land and deal group. And we call it V. Lawrence proved uh, geometric Satake equivalence which is an equivalence between the represent representation category of land and deal and the uh, uh, category of perverse sheaves on Lavan Grassmannian. So in the course of their proof, they introduce what we now call MV cycles of type lambda and mu and weight, weight mu. Uh, here, Lambdas are, uh, let's say, line the root lattice, which is dominant, and mu also line in the root lattice. And it's defined to be the closure of irreducible components of some of this set. It's like the attracting set. I mean, we, we consider flow on the alpha class money, and then we consider the like stable manifold and stable manifold. An example is that um, when the weight is the W0 lambda, W0 is the longest element, then the MV cycle would be the largest one, the closure of the spherical, I mean the geo orbit. And if the weight is lambda itself, then the smallest, I mean, then the MV cycle would be the smallest one consisting of a point. And um, one important name is that um, if we denote uh, S lambda by the highest rate representation, and we decompose it into uh, the weight spaces, it turns out that the weight, each weight space has a basis indexed by the MV cycle of type lambda and weight of of weight mu. Here I use S because it's below the sure module. Because everything works over integers, and in that case, I find sure module more convenient. And um, you don't use isomorphism. Well, they use the geometric static equivalence to construct a ring isomorphism from the coordinate ring of uh, the centralized group scheme of this element. Well, we have seen this element when we define Peterson variety. So, so I mean, I should give an example. So E is the, is the matrix, which are all one in the off diagonal. And F H will be correspond to the will correspond to the diagonal entries. And so B E T is the group centralized group scheme of matrix of this form. So we have such a ring isomorphism. And this isomorphism has already been constructed by um Russell Kartinkov, Fingerburn, Mikovic, but earlier, but without geometric attack. And one advantage of uh, using geometric data case is that we can compute it. In fact, Bowman, Kenneth, uh, Krusen find that uh, uh, Yunju's map sends certain matrix coefficient uh, to the fundamental class of the MV cycle. Namely, so we have S lambda, which is a representation, 
So we can take a consider the matrix like this, so that so that the entries are regular functions on G, but we can restrict it to B E T, and uh, we look at the particular row corresponding to the smallest and cycle. So that is um, the highest wage vector. And they show that uh, the map send this uh, regular function to the fundamental class. So because uh, we have a, you know, we we have a basis, right? Indexed by MV cycle. So here's, this matrix is taken with respect to this basis. So the input is, let's say, is that uh, MV cycle. Then we consider this, the entry sitting in this row so that uh, it sends the matrix coefficient to the fundamental class of Z. So, um, so I've introduced um, another family of cycles other than alpha and super cycles. So you, we can ask, can we compute? I mean, what, what, what if we uh, input uh, the fundamental class of every cycle into a PRS map? It turns out we can do it uh, for, for if weight, I mean, for this weight, well, so in this picture, they are they are colored in red. Well, you see that it's not a it's not a large class, but it turns out we can we have some surprising application. So first of all, we observe that if the weight of the ME cycle, uh, I mean, for example, uh, let's consider all the weight. Uh, a uh, color in red, except uh, the vertex, then we see that the dimension is quite large. It's larger than this number. And it's equal to this number if the weight, I mean, the, is Z correspond to this vertex. So we call um, this, because this is an extremal weight, this is one dimension, the weight space is one dimensional. So that is generated by one MV cycle. Let us below this cycle by this, um, set WP W0. Or well, WP is the longest element of alpha, I mean, the wall group of P. Because I, we are going to play with this cycle, we give it a notation. Okay, so uh, before the break, I would like to um, go for a, a few slides. So let's let us go back to the southwest side of the map. So we have seen this picture before. So we um, uh, we define some notation. So we consider the modularized stack of uh, the stable maps I told you before. And uh, but now the the cycle output cycle will be denoted by C, and uh, the gamma will be some resolution of the uh, geo, I mean the closure of geo orbit, and there's a fact that well, if we consider m zero u more p, we know that uh, the modular space is not empty uh, when the degree. Uh, in the cone, right? In certain cone span by some co -root. For our case, it is the set of degrees such that uh, the, the modular stack of sections is non empty, it will be the same thing but with some shift. So it's no longer an effective cone, but, um, but the effective cone shifted. So this is original effective cone, but now we the cone will be shifted downwards, going to the anti-dominant chamber. And by some computation, I mean some dimension argument, we can show that uh, if we put x, oh, I forgot to say, for any x lying in the, the geo orbit closure lambda, then um, our map um, when would be zero if the degree is, is sufficiently large. 
And uh, when, because in this case, uh, all the modular sets have no contribution by some dimension argument. And uh, when the degree is equal to this number, then we expect, um, it's not hard to expect that uh, almost all the modular stacks have no contribution, but there's some exception. It turns out that uh, there's only one modular stack contributing to, to the Gomorrah invariant. So it turns out that this number would be some intersecting number, intersection number uh, of X and some of the stack when the, the degree is the, the smallest one and uh, the cycle is the smallest as well, the point class. So uh, from the first equality, we can we see that for all MV cycle with weight uh, strictly less than WP, W0, lambda, our map, the PRS map, now we turn the PRS map, will be zero. This is what we can see from the corollary. But what I but I have to say that uh, it's not very difficult to prove that from the com from the combinatorics of the PRS map. We call PRS map is defined explicitly, and we can actually use it to prove this result almost from definition. But what is perhaps um, non-trivial is the computation of this intersection number. We probably can't prove it easily from the definition of PRS map. So let, let's take a break after I explain this slide. So what the, the foreign proof is not very rigorous, but I, I find it, this is the, a good way to, to see why this is true. So first we determine this stack. It turns out it is, um, but so uh, first we don't consider, for simplicity, we don't consider resolution. Don't consider resolution, but but the, the geo orbit closure itself, it turns out that the stack is isomorphic to the, some sub, some, or, some orbit by sub, some subgroup. Here, L is the left is of P. So we have, we have formed the alpha class one of L, which is a um, sub in scheme, scheme of the alpha class one of G. And we can take the orbit closure like this. We have such an isomorphism, and, and roughly speaking, it's proved by, and why is this true? Because, uh, so we recall we have a principal G bundle over this geo orbit closure. And if we restrict this principal G bundle over this error orbit closure, uh, the structure group will reduce from G to L. And because EP is fixed by L, so we have this map, L equivalent map, and we can take the isolated fiber bundle and the left hand side for the left from the left hand side we can construct a section. I mean, for every point of this arrow orbit, we can construct a section, and then we map it into a uh, the side of space, so that we get a map from right hand side to left hand side, and we can use the regularity and dimensional argument to prove that they are equal. And um, so the next step is to show that the intersection number is one. And we can consider the C star action on the geo orbit closure. So let's just assume we have a BB decomposition, but it is not true because it's not smooth, but we can show that um, the, the largest one, largest BB that exists, so that it is a, a fiber bundle over the fixed point component. And it turns out that the arrow orbit closure is is the fixed point component, and uh, our ME cycle is a closure of one one of the fibers of this fiber bundle, so that the intersection is one. Yeah, so here's a proof of yeah of this equality. So um, I think I should pause it here for a break.
Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So how will the brick take? Yeah, we'll take uh, maybe maybe three minutes break until five oh eight. Okay. Yeah.